To look at swing time, let's start off by once again breaking the beat down into three. What I'm going to do now is where every beat breaks down into three so that every beat gets three claps, I'm only going to clap on the first and third claps of each beat. So instead of going one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and so on, I'll be going one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. When we only clap on the ones and threes like that, the rhythm that it creates is called a swing rhythm or swing time. There are absolutely loads of songs written in swing time, so let's take a look at a few examples and see how that swing rhythm underlies these following songs. So here we have a swing rhythm written in 12-8. 12-8 gives us four beats to the bar, each divided into three. And as we said, the swing rhythm plays on the first and third subdivisions of each beat. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. Of course, anything we can write in compound time, we can also write in simple time. So here's exactly the same rhythm in 4-4 four, four using triplets. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. In reality, though, we have a much easier way of writing out music in swing time. What we do is simply write standard quavers like this, but then with a special instruction at the start, which says a quaver pair equals a crotchet quaver triplet. That means that when we see as an ordinary quaver pair like that, instead of giving these notes half a beat each, we'll treat them as a crotchet quaver triplet which means the first one will get two-thirds of the beat, and the last one will get the last third of the beat, exactly the same as the examples we've just looked at, like this. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three. But when we use this instruction, we don't think of it like that. We just count one and two and three and four and, and just remember to swing the quavers. One and two 